All right, a few more joining. We will go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I want to introduce and read um, Jalen Fisher's bio. So Jalen Fisher is a purpose-driven entrepreneur, speaker, and HR professional from Indianapolis, Indiana. She is a CEO of GoFit LLC, a lifestyle brand created to help professionals level up in their careers through career coaching, resume building, and interview preparation services. By day, Jalen works as an HR consultant, serving small to medium-sized businesses locally across the U.S., she is also the co-founder of Black and HR Indy, an organization created for Black HR professionals to connect and network in Indianapolis. As a former, former technical recruiter with nearly five years of experience in recruitment, Jalen has had the opportunity to be a strategic partner to leadership teams throughout the hiring process and help job seekers to reach their career goals. Ultimately, Jalen is passionate about helping individuals reach their goals and providing value to the community in which she serves. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Jalen. Thank you, Rachel. Hey, everyone. I hope y'all are doing well. Happy Wednesday. Um, shout out to you all for being here on a Wednesday evening, midweek. Um, I am so excited to be talking with you all today. Um, I have a um, slideshow that I'm going to go ahead and share, and then I will jump in. All right. Let me know if you all can see my screen okay. Good, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and present. Perfect, all good? Some thumbs up. I am a very, I love interaction. So throughout this, I will be having you do all, uh, you all do some engagement with me. Um, but again, my name is Jalen Fisher. Super excited to be here with you all today. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about myself, but what I would love, uh, just since we have a number of you on the call, maybe drop your name, what city you're in, and maybe what role you're in currently. I would love to kind of go through and get to know some of you all as well and do some shout outs uh, before we really jump into the meat of the session. Um, but to get started, so you all can get to know me a little bit. So again, um, speaker, career coach, and HR professional based out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I am the founder and CEO of GoalFit LLC, um, a brand that is all about getting fit with your personal professional goals. So what I do through GoalFit um, is I provide services for resume building, interview preparation, and career coaching services. Um, as Rachel mentioned, co-founder of Black and HR Indy, we started that in 2020. Um, we have over 100 members now that have engaged with us, came out to networking events. Um, so that's been really fun. And then, so you all can get to know me um, outside of the professional realm. Um, again, Indy native. I am a lover of all things travel, performing arts, food, and just fun. I love to have a good time. Um, and I am, again, just passionate about, passionate about helping professionals level up in their careers and connecting organizations with top talent as well. So I'm going to check out the chat. I don't see any in the chat, y'all. Let me know what city you're in, a little bit about you. I see Maya, UX designer, um, current, uh, currently upscaling into data analytics. Awesome. And Mel uh, Medellin, Colombia. Nice. Um, Celia is from Indianapolis, Indiana, 10 year nonprofit director looking for a career change. Okay, career change. You're in the perfect place for that. Um, so, again, feel free to drop throughout. Um, would love to get to know you all, but I'm going to jump right into the agenda because. I have a packed session for you all today. So we are going to first be diving directly into resume essentials. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to tailor your resume. We're going to hit on interview preparation. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on interview preparation, but I do want to make sure that I'm hitting on how you can use your resume to prepare you um, for your interview as that comes. And then um, resume hot seat. Um, so we had some folks who sent in their resume. So 
Um, I have some, some prepared and then some additional. We'll see how many we can get to with those. Um, and then I'll end with some job searching tips, um, tips if time permits. Um, let's see, check in the chat. Hey, Tiff from New, Al New Albany, Indiana, software development student. Awesome. Maricela, um, help desk, wanting to pivot into IT, switch careers from interior design to tech. Nice. There's a lot of transferable skills with that. Hey, Ryan from Indianapolis and Lainey. Okay. I'm so excited to meet you all. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to keep the ball rolling. So first question for you, please put in the chat or feel free to come off of mute. What do you think is the average time recruiters spend viewing resumes? Any guesses? Let's see what we have in the chat. 10 seconds. Any other guesses for how long you all think recruiters? 30 seconds. 20 minutes, one minute, six seconds. So Julian hit it on the nose. So the average time that recruiters, now I don't wanna scare you all. It does not mean that, um, it does not mean that we don't look at your resume longer than six seconds, right? But what it does mean is that as recruiters are sifting through your resumes um, on a regular basis, they are you typically in the first six to eight seconds can do a quick skin to see if your resume is going to align with that type of role. Um, so that is the average time. Um, so what does that mean? It means it's important to make your resume stand out. Um, and so the goal is for your resume to get pushed through an ATS system. ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System. So a lot of times it's the system that recruiters are utilizing to be able to sift through resumes. And a lot of times they may put together what we would call like a Boolean search. They would put that search in with keywords that are either from the job description or um, keywords that um, might be in the requisition that they are looking at or coming directly from the hiring manager. And so you want to make sure that your resume is tailored to the types of roles that you were interested in so that you can make sure that your resume gets through that software system. So with that, um, I want to talk a little bit about um, how, for one, you know, your resume is the first impression that hiring managers have of you. Um, and so you want to make sure that your resume is truly telling a story about you. Now, you want it to be a summarized, concise story, right? So, but you want to make sure that you are demonstrating to them what it is exactly that you're looking for, why you're qualified for the role, and what some of your background has looked like. So we are going to talk about the main resume essentials. So when we're looking at a resume, um, let's go ahead and just kind of break down what it is that should be included in your resume. So you want to start off with a professional summary. Um, this is the first area, about three to five sentences, where you are directly stating um, really a summary about yourself. Um, so you're going to start off, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these more in depth here in the next couple slides, um, but really your summary lets the recruiter know it should be one of the first things that they look at that they're going to see that tells me, okay, this is the industry that they're in, this is the type of roles that they're interested in, and maybe even some of the core functions, um, and then professional skills. So with your skills section, um, it's really important to list out the types of skills, rather technical skills, interpersonal skills. You want to make sure you have a good mixture that is going to set you apart um, as recruiters are looking through resumes. Professional experience. Um, so this is a description of your work history um, or internships or what have you. So this is where you want to have a description um, and include a key project. So I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Um, but something that really makes resumes stand out is if they have a key project listed underneath their work experience. So that could be, for example, I have a role where 
Um, I do see your hand. I'll, I'll get to you right in a second. I do see, a, I have a role where, um, let's say, for example, for myself, I have a description of my job, but I had a project where I did a full revamp to the talent acquisition process from start to finish. So that was something I pulled out of my description and I listed as a key project or highlight. So again, I'll talk about that. I'll, I have an example coming up in a couple of slides that I'll show you. Um, and then education. So this is where you list your degrees and certifications. Um, for education, I want to say that you want to make sure you are listing either current or completed education and certifications. And then community involvement and leadership. So maybe some of you that have been in organizations um, have had leadership roles. Maybe you're on an advisory board. Um, so it's a really good place to list some of your community involvement. Um, you don't have to go too, you know, too much in depth, but it, it is good to have on your resume, um, especially depending on the type of role um, or industry that you're in, rather. Um, and then as a pro tip, um, add a link to your res to your website or professional portfolio um, to your LinkedIn. So if you do have that, a great place to put that is on your resume and um, include your LinkedIn as well. Um, there is a way on LinkedIn to make a shortened link um, so that it only includes like your name instead of utilizing a long LinkedIn link on your resume. Um, so those are a couple of tips that um, I would recommend. Um, and I'm gonna talk about these a little bit more specifically as well. Hey, Jay, I see one quick. hand. Oh. Uh, yeah, yes. Are you showing a blank screen right now? I am? Yeah. Oh, that's strange. I thought no it was one... on purpose at first, but then, you know. No, <laughs> that's so strange. Okay. Sorry about that. I have a whole slide yeah. up in front of me. You was talking good, too, you know. <laughs> I was like, I, I feel bad. I need you guys to see it. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I am going to share. Hopefully, you all have still been getting some takeaways with the words I've been saying. Yeah, still okay, good so, stuff. <laughs> so let me try this again. Can you all see this screen? Yes. Okay, so I wonder if it's when I go into present. Can you all see the presentation? Yeah, we can see it now. Oh. Like, is it a little fake? Is there supposed to be words on the screen or is it yeah. just a Okay, let me let me try. Sorry about that. Okay, so let me try to do let me share the whole desktop and let's see if that works. All right. So what about now? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. Back in action. All <laughs> right. So, um, so again, this is just a slide of everything I've talked about so far. If you want to take a picture of it, take a screenshot, what have you. Um, is that what I might have seen the hand for? I saw someone that had their hand up. I'm assuming that's what it was for. That was, yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yes. Yeah. Those are the resume essentials. So we are going to kind of break it down a little bit more. And I want to talk about areas where you can tailor your resume. So let's talk a little bit about the professional summary first. Um, so you want to make sure that you are tailoring your professional summary to the area of interest. Um, you want to make sure that you are pulling relevant professional skills out of the job description that you have and making a list of all of your skill sets to tailor them to the position. Um, and then highlighting your most relevant responsibilities in your professional experience section. So I'm going to break each of these a little bit down. But when I think about tailoring your resume, the biggest areas where you have the opportunity to do that are the summary, skills section, and then the way that you are laying out your professional experience. So to hit on the summary section first. So this should have, again, three to five sentences at the top of your resume. Um, you want to lead with your current title and be direct about the opportunities that you are in pursuit of. For example, at the top of a professional summary section, someone could have a experienced IT professional um, with experience in the core functions of A, B, and C in pursuit of an opportunity to. 
So that's where you're being very direct about the types of roles that you're interested in. And it lets a recruiter know right away, okay, I should spend a little bit more time taking a deep dive into this resume. And then make sure, again, you're including a concise summary um, of your core areas of focus and expertise. So these are the main things that you want to keep in mind with your professional summary section. And feel free, if you all have questions throughout as well, um, please let me know, um, and I will make sure to get to those as I see those come up. To talk a little bit about professional skills. So if someone were to ask you, what are some of your professional skills? What are some of the things you all would say? Feel free to come off mute. You can just share verbally, like if someone asks you, what, what's one of your professional skills, what would you say? You can either come off mute I, or share the chat. Yeah, so I, I would, one of my, No, you do go first, sorry. I would say one of my skills uh, is take stakeholder engagement. I did a lot of fundraising in the 10 years in nonprofit and worked with donors all the way from $25 donors to million dollar donors. So that's one of my biggest skills and strengths, I feel, as well as community outreach. I worked with a lot of different initiatives um, and it involved being out in the community. So those are just some of the skills that I always highlight in my resume. Thank you. I think those are both really strong skill sets to have listed. Ryan, I, I saw you were saying something as well. Yes, I was saying uh, maybe I'm organized. I will organize or meet something like that. Okay, okay. So maybe like organization. Um, you could even have, if if let's say, like even being attentive to detail, like if that's something you could kind of loop into that as well. But I think yes. having um, organization skills is super important as well. If for any role. Right, that's a transferable skill. One more person. I, I would be. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I wrote like on mine, for example, like effective interpersonal skills, um, security auditing, technical writing. In all honesty, I referenced job postings that I thought that I wanted to go. Not I thought I wanted to go after the jobs that I wanted. I looked at the words and saw what applied to me and then put those things in my resume without lying, of course. But yeah. um, those key words, trying to find things that stuck out to pass that ATS part of the, yes. um, part of the how do you say, the process itself. So in those 10, like six seconds, I only have so much time. So I made sure to put that up towards the very top underneath my profile. So I put it under key competencies. Mm -hmm. um, but those are like some things that I wrote. And then like also NIST and PCI DSS, like trigger words for those uh, recruiters. Yes, you definitely hit the nail on the head. Um, and that is one thing that I recommend people do that you should do is take a look at the job descriptions um, that you are applying for. If those things are some of your skill sets, put them on your resume, like literally put them on your resume, tie them into your experience, listen to your professional skills. Now, Maricela, you hit one really important piece. Make sure it's a skill that you have, right? Like make sure it's a skill that you have, yes. that, you feel <laughs> that you are efficient, you know, proficient in. Um, so that way, you know, it's good to have that in your resume because it's going to pull it up to the top of the list. But if you're not able to talk about it in an interview, it's, it's, um, it's not going to work, right? So um, really, really great um, tip that you included there. So thank you for sharing that. Um, professional skills. So I recommend that people have a combination of interpersonal skills and technical skills on your resume. Um, reason being, even for those, let's say you're going into, you're really interested in going into a developer role or really interested in going into like an IT role that might not have that much communication that's client facing. However, you might have to collaborate with team members. You might have to collaborate with implementation project managers on a certain system or project that's coming through. And so because of that, you might still have to work and work directly with other people. So that's why it's so good to have some of those um, interpersonal skills listed. So I listed a few examples 
And then also having some technical skills. So whether it's software testing, web development, um, listing specific programming languages um, that you are utilizing, like Java, Python, JavaScript, um, Azure um, operating system. Um, so if you're utilizing a lot of Google, Microsoft. So those types of things are really important to make sure that you're kind of giving us a little bit of both. Um, it really lets them know that you are a well-rounded um, professional and that you can be a strong asset to their team. And then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about professional experience. So um, for some of you that are, let's say, transitioning careers um, or you're an entry-level career professional, Sometimes it can be hard. Like let's let's be honest, it can be very hard to find the types of roles that you're interested in, um, or to just get that right phone call, right? And so I want to encourage you that you can absolutely build a strong resume with your coursework and projects. Um, and so here are some of the things that I would recommend. The first thing is utilize action words. So you want to use words like developed built, collaborated with, analyzed, configured. So give us very specific action words and lead with those things. Sometimes on resumes, I might see things that say like responsible for, or, um, you know, some of those things, it's not necessarily an action word, but it makes your resume so much more powerful if you just lead right into what exactly it is, it is that you were doing in that role. Um, incorporating key projects. Um, so again, I hit a little bit on this, but make sure that you're in incorporating key projects that relate directly to the roles of interest. Um, and then again, adding links to your website, professional portfolio. The reason being is that you can only fit so much on your resume, right? And so someone once told me that you're they said your resume and your LinkedIn um, should be siblings, not twins. So they should correlate directly with each other. But sometimes you just cannot fit everything on your resume. But if you have a LinkedIn profile, you can go a little bit more in depth. You can share a little bit more. You can add way more skills um, on there that you may not be able to add onto your resume. So again, I just really want to stress that it is so important to include that and never underestimate your transferable skills. So maybe right now, even for those that are transitioning careers, maybe you're moving into a whole new area, but think about where you can, um, where you can kind of utilize some transferable skills. So I saw someone in the chat that said, I believe moving from interior design into IT, I believe that's what I saw. Um, let me, I'll have to look back and see. But even with that as an example, think about in interior design, what computer systems were you using? Who were you working with? Um, were you having to work with multiple stakeholders? So I know interior design that they util utilize a lot of different systems and softwares. So that's what I mean by think about, okay, what I was doing may not be exactly what I want to go into, but I can pull out some systems that... Um, can show that I have a technical um, technical ability. So I wanna take a pause there. Um, any questions on anything? I've, I haven't seen any questions in the chat, but give me an emoji, give me something, let me know you all are still with me. If this information is making sense to you, um, if it's helpful for you, let me know. I will keep an eye out for questions, um, but I'm going to continue going on here because um, we have some, some more meat to kind of get to in the presentation. So with your LinkedIn and resume, again, as I mentioned this, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about LinkedIn because we are here to talk about resumes, but um, I have to at least mention that it is so important to make sure that if you have your LinkedIn on your resume, make sure that you are, um, sorry about that. Make sure that you are um, aligning your LinkedIn and your resume. So I, as a recruiter, um, there have been so many times where I've looked at someone's resume and then I go to their LinkedIn and it does not match. Um, so you want to make sure, even if your LinkedIn is not on your resume, make sure that they match. 
um, make sure that they are on one accord, um, but both are definitely essential. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to use your resume for an interview. I'm gonna check the chat. I don't see any questions as of yet. Um, so I am, oh, I see. Let's see, I have a question. I only worked two jobs my whole life and I'm currently on the hunt to find a job. Um, so Ryan, maybe um, if you can add a little bit to that, um, maybe uh, yeah, I was that. trying to. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, you're good. You're good. I was trying to say, like, uh, what can I add to my resume to like, because I know I've been getting like bites and stuff. I've been getting calls, interviews, just nothing's been sticking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Some of the things that I would think about, um, and even with having two jobs, um, that's that's okay. Because what you can do, though, is you can go back and look at what is everything that I have been doing? What does my day-to-day -day look like? Um, sometimes when we sign up for a job and we start a new job, um, over time, we are doing way more than the job description said <laughs> initially upon hire. It just happens sometimes that way. So maybe think about like, what am I actually doing? Does my resume really reflect my day-to-day -day, or does it really show like just a, a, a small description of what I'm doing? Um, does my resume show who I'm working with? Does it show what kinds of systems that I'm using? Um, so there might um, there might be some opportunity um, where I can where you can do that. AI um, is a common thing that people are utilizing as well. So you can definitely 100% AI can make you a resume. Now I would recommend that you add a a human touch to that. So you have someone take a look at it. Um, perhaps um, maybe even you know I would be happy to take a look at your resume. But make sure that you have someone take a look at it and make sure that um, there is still, a, still a, a human effect to it. Because I can tell, uh, at least a lot of recruiters, like we can tell when something was made by the computer versus made by a person, right? So you want to make sure um, that you're adding in some of those things as well. But Ryan, I'm happy to connect with you after the call and maybe we can kind of do some brainstorming and I can take a look at your resume. So I'm going to talk a little bit about utilizing your resume for an interview. So I'm sure we've all heard the like, tell me about yourself, which can sometimes be a very awkward way to start the interview, right? Um, because you're like, okay, well, where do I start? What do you want to know? Um, so I want to talk about how you can actually use your resume to prepare you for an interview and how you can succeed utilizing your resume. So the first thing, um, introduce yourself with your name, title, and top three core skills. Um, so my name is Jalen Fisher. I am currently an HR consultant working at said company, and I have a background in recruitment. Um, let's say, I would say recruitment, um, or performance management, and let's say utilizing um, utilizing A, B, and C systems. So that would be an example of how you can introduce yourself. Now you don't have to stick to that script, but you want to have a general um, a general summary of just you know your name, what are you doing now, and tell me a little bit about your what areas that you would summarize that it's going to be relevant to that role, right? Um, so definitely use the job description. Um, then describe your background. So I always tell people use a format that is present, past, future. So that is really going to keep you like on topic because when you are giving an introduction, you really want to kind of keep it close to the 90 second mark if possible. There have been times where I may ask someone to tell me a little bit about themselves, ask for an introduction, and then they talk for five minutes straight. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, so you want to make sure you're starting with what you're present. What are you doing now? What have you done in the past? What are you looking to do moving forward? And then step three, state your interest, be direct about what it is that you are looking for and why you're a good fit for the opportunity. 
Um, so this is the format that I always encourage um, the clients that I work with um, because it's really going to help you to stay on task. Um, and then use your resume to prepare you for the res for the interview. So for every, what I do, this is what I do before interviews. It's what I encourage people to do before interviews. For every core responsibility of the job, I would encourage you to think of on-the-job scenarios that have occurred. So you could go into an interview. You don't know what they're going to ask you, right? They might ask you some behavioral questions. They might say, tell me about a time when. So for every bullet point on my resume, I can think of a exact instant where I had to do that. If I do that in advance, when they ask me, okay, I see this on your resume. I see um, a talent acquisition revamp project here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I'm prepared to tell them exactly what it is that I did, who I worked with, and what the result was. So use those bullet points underneath your professional experience to help guide you in that process. The next thing, use key highlights on your resume as discussion points. Um, so I have a, an example of this coming up here soon, but underneath where I might say a, a specific project that I worked on in that role, um, use that as a discussion point to be able to talk a little bit more. So again, it prevents you from having to say, hmm, okay, let me think about it. Because if you might have to stop and think about it, the on the other side, they might be thinking, okay, well, they did submit a resume. They had this listed on the resume, but they're not prepared to talk about it. So you just want to make sure that you are utilizing these bullet points to prepare you. And then utilizing your professional skills section. Um, so if someone asks you, what are some of your strengths? What are you prepared to bring to, um, bring to the company? Um, utilize those strengths. Um, that you have in your professional skills section to help you recall some of those things in the moment. So these, I just want to show you all a couple of actual examples from a resume so you can kind of see what I mean by, by this. Um, and again, resumes, this is uh, a not a technical resume, but I just want to give you an example of what I mean by key project because I keep talking about it. So you'll see here, um, this is where I would have like job title, company, date. I would have a few bullet points about what it is that I'm doing there. And then this is what I mean by key project. So you can add something underneath. Let's say if you um, spearheaded a specific project on your team. Um, I saw someone's resume when I was kind of doing some preparation, reviewing some of the resumes that were submitted. Someone talked about how they were leading training for new hires. Like, that's great. You should put that as a key project on your resume and prepare that, um, prepare to talk a little bit more about that. So that's kind of what, what I mean by pulling out a key project in your resume. It's really going to make your resume stand out. And then utilizing a combination of um, industry-based technical skills and um, inter interpersonal skills. So you'll see here, like I have collaboration, um, relationship building, um, but then I have talent management recruitment marketing. Um, so those are some of the things that you can list on your resume. And then also some systems. So um, LinkedIn Recruiter, Paycor, Google Apps, um, Salesforce. So these are some of the things that you can utilize on your resume to prepare you for the interview, but also it's going to help you to strengthen your resume overall. So before we go into the resume hot seat, any questions that you all have for me over anything I have talked about so far today? I, I have a question. Yes. Hi, um, my name's Cameron. Um, my question would be about, I guess, I, I wouldn't say that you specifically like drilled in on this part, but I have a question about formatting because I understand the, um, like the ATS system. I, I mean, I work in HR, payroll, all that. So okay. very well versed on CRMs and recruiting software, all that kind of stuff. However, 
my question would be about like format. Is there any specific or um, any certain type of format that speaks better to ATS systems than than not? Yeah, so I would say the first thing is always making sure just in general submitting as a PDF. Um, sometimes when people submit as a Word document, it can, and I'm going to bring you all over here. So I'm speaking directly to you. Um, so you want to make sure that you're submitting a PDF document. That's the first thing. Um, now I know that Canva is great. There are resume templates on Canva. It, they're so cute to use. However, they do not transfer over well to an ATS system. So if you're someone that utilizes um, a system like Canva, I would probably not utilize that. Um, the next thing, um, I've also seen some resumes come through Indeed. Um, Indeed is a great starting point. Um, however, sometimes the way that Indeed formats the resumes, um, recruiters have to scroll down to see some of that those first pieces of information, such as like professional summary. A lot of times skills are at the very bottom of a Indeed resume as well. Um, so you all want to make sure that um, I would say even just starting with a Word document, like a, literally a true Word document format. Um, I always recommend having a professional summary. Um, then if, if your education is, I would say within the if you're either, either if your education is within the last couple of years, maybe last two years, two to three years, or it's current, keep it at the top of your of your resume, because that way it shows it gives a little bit of an explanation why you may only have a couple pieces of like work history listed. Um, so or it just shows that you're entry level. So I recommend having that next if that is um if that does relate to you. So like mine, for example, mine is the bottom um, because I have now gained the professional experience to where it's more beneficial for me to have my professional experience first than my education, right? So professional summary, education, um, if it's current or more recent or your entry level, um, if not, have that at the bottom. I would go professional summary, skills, next. Um, so you want to have the skills breakdown of your skills, your uh, interpersonal technical skills, and then also like software systems. So that's something like I have on mine, for example, I have like professional skills and then I have like technical skills and I include the software there that I'm using. Now for some resumes, there are some that we'll go through today that have their skills um, labeled out a little bit differently. So for example, um, uh, with a lot of, let's say, like developers, um, even like S SAP, um, SAP project managers, like sometimes in that realm, they may have their languages, their programming languages, or the types of environments that they're working in, um, that might actually be included with their professional experience instead of a, a separate skill. So you can do either one. I've seen both. Um, but I would say, going back, recap, professional summary, skills, professional experience, education. If you have any community involvement that you would like to include, I would include that at the bottom. I hope that it helps to answer your question. No, no that, that was great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. And then the, the other thing I would say just on a formatting tip, um, always it's always good. And I recommend that people have their job title first. So if I'm looking at a resume, I would put job title directly underneath, have the company that they're, that you're at, and then the date directly across from the job title. So that way, it's a very clean look to the resume of I can literally see, because again, in that first few, few seconds, I'm looking at the resume, I just want to see job title, date, how long were you in this job title? Is that going to be most relevant? And then I'm going to take a little, I'm going to look a little bit deeper into what you have. Okay, thank you. And uh, sorry, but I did want to just say too, to kind of what you were saying with the ND resumes, I agree about that formatting. And um, I ended up taking my ND resume and like copying and pasting and putting it in chat GPT and saying, hey, 
you know, create me a two page because it creates like a six page thing. Like, mm -hmm. can create me a two page using more or less using the following information, and that's okay. how I minimize that. Just FYI. Okay. I like that. Look, a AI can do everything. So again, like I, it's always a good option. Just make sure that you go back and add, add your own touch to the, to the AI resume. Any other questions before I, I'm actually going to go through this list here that I have, because I want to make sure that I am doing um, <clears throat> resume hot seats for people that are on this call. Um, so I, Cameron, did you submit your resume? Um, I believe so. Okay. Is it okay if we start with yours? Are you comfortable with me sharing that? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. So I'll pull up your resume and we will jump in. Um, Akira, is it too late to send? I know we have an, a number that we got. However, if you would like, I can set up some time after today's call with you if you're if you're okay with that. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. And I did prepare some notes for you all as well. Um, and I will make sure that for those that did submit that I will get these notes over to you. Can you all see my screen okay? Perfect. All right. And I am going to move this over. And pull your notes, Cameron. So um, Cameron, for your resume, um, we already talked a little bit about Indeed. It sounds like that's something that you have already started working on on your end. Um, so the first thing, I really thought that you were very detailed. Um, I really like that you included um, information about the types of payroll systems that you're utilizing. Um, you have a lot of action words that you're utilizing. So processing, um, uh, running payroll reports, importing, um, who you're partnering partnering with, utilize. Um, so some of those things are really good action words that you incorporated into your um, system. My question for you, are you mainly looking for payroll positions or is that the area that you, you would like to stay in? Uh, yes, yeah, so okay. payroll or... Payroll tax, like, unfortunately, <laughs> my LinkedIn profile and my resume don't match. So I've actually been working on updating that for the last about week or so. Okay. But my current um, title is a senior um, payroll and tax analyst. So that's kind of the realm I'm trying to stay in. Okay, got it. So with that being said, one thing just to include in your, I think you could give us a little bit more with your professional summary. So you could say uh, a payroll, payroll professional, um, an experienced payroll professional with, um, you can list your years of experience, or you could just say with expertise, um, and you could say multi-state payroll, um, if you want to list certain industries that are of most interest. But I think you can give us a little bit more <clears throat> And also very directly state um, that you are interested in payroll positions. Now, I, I assumed that you were looking for payroll positions, but um, if there are certain roles that you were ever interested in, it's always good to just um, allude to those types of resumes that you are in, those types of roles that you're interested in. Um, you have a very strong skills section. So this is kind of what I meant by the Indeed resumes are great, um, but they usually list the skills at the bottom. Um, so you and... Um, it, it usually, um, I think you can have a lot of these skills listed on your LinkedIn, but maybe we can minimize some of the ones that we have on your resume. But your skills section is, is very thorough. Um, so what I would recommend, just as you are taking this resume and you're moving it over to, to a new format, what are maybe the six um, or even like nine skills that might be the most efficient? Um, that way you can put them in a three column format on your resume and it's going to save you a lot more space. Um, so I would think about um, that those amount of skills 
that you can list on your resume. As it relates to your professional experience, um, I would think about, is there a key project you can pull out? So let's say, have you ever moved some, have you ever, ever moved a client or moved your company over to a new payroll system? Like that's a whole project. That is a very in-depth project. Um, or even just think about some of the things that you have done. I don't know at BC Forward, if you're work, doing payroll directly for BC Forward, I know that there are staffing. So are you doing that? Yeah other clients as well? Yeah. So I actually work directly for BC Ford. Like I work at the okay. corporate office. Okay. But um, no, I agree with you because like one of the things that I heard you talking about is like, oh, if you were like training, you know, like leading training or something. So like I've led like pilots and different things like that. Like when I was at Paycheck. So that that makes sense. I mean, I understand that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, that. no problem. Um, and then the last thing I would say, is just think about where you can um, consolidate as well. So maybe think about some of the things just for, for the sake of, I think once you move over to a new resume format, it's going to help with some of that, um, just to kind of help consolidate uh, a little bit of your resume. But as far as the content, very thorough. Um, I think um, you might even think of you're going to add some information. So you have peer to peer coaching and mentoring. Um, but, you know, were you ever building out any of that training? Did you design that training as a team lead or um, so those are some things to think about. But in a, in, a, in a short synopsis, those are the main key points that I would kind of pull for your resume. Any questions? Yes. First, thank you so, so much. That's extremely helpful. And very much where I'm leading, like that's what I've been working towards. So that's why it's been taking me a little while <laughs> uh, to update it. it. But my question would be, um, like, what would you say would be a, a good max, if you will, of like my job history? Should that be based off of like, you know, over a span of years or should that be based off of just, you know, my my time at these, you know what I mean? Like my, my experience. I guess yeah. So. so, so I think, I mean, what you have is relevant even to going to 2015. I think that's still okay. But even like for dispatcher, you may not need to have that on your resume. You know, like I would say you have enough payroll experience here to where you may not need to list that necessarily. Um, so that's something though you can have on your LinkedIn. Right. So, um, but what you have, I mean, you were a lot of these roles for, you know, for some years here as well. Um, so I think it's, it's okay. The length of your, what you have on your resume is okay. Um, I would say probably wouldn't go back more than 10, 10 years, but that just depends. There are some people that have been in maybe one company for longer. They may have been in two companies for a long period of time. So every resume is different. Um, but that, for example, would be something where I would say like, you may not need to include this on your resume and it just that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. No problem. So let's see. Do we have, I do not see Kojo. Let's see. I'm just going down the list of who I kind of did first come first serve. Whoever submitted their resume is Jared on. Don't see Jared. Angela, no, I don't see her. John, is it Milka? Don't see Milka. All right, so I'm gonna go. I think Maricela. Uh, I saw Maricela, and let's see. Are you comfortable with doing a resume walkthrough? Oh yes, please tear mine apart, please. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I'm just going to give some general notes and I'm going to make note here for you that I will send your notes after the call. Um, so let's start off by just taking a look at your profile. So at a first glance, you have a very strong, um, you're starting off with a strong pro uh, professional summary. Um, so I really like that you start off here, IT and risk compliance um, analyst with five plus years of combined experience. And you tell us directly what you're experiencing, which is great. Um, continuous commitment to self-study, attainable or attainment of multiple certifications, demonstrated success, 
in supporting and conducting financial and asset auditing, showcasing ability to co collaborate with cross-functional teams. So I think this is something that this can probably be divided into two sentences here. Um, and I think even just ending with what it is that you're looking to do next, um, which I like that you had become a valuable asset to a dynamic team. So even kind of cutting off this, this first piece that you have here, kind of consolidating that a little bit, and then yeah. ending with um, what you're looking for moving forward, which is a, a dynamic team where you can contribute to the overall organization success. So that at first glance, that's kind of what, what I would recommend for you. Um, key competencies. Um, so here, um, detail-oriented. So things such as like self-motivated, detail-oriented. So these are skills, but I would encourage you to kind of utilize these. Um, this can be utilized in your professional summary. So you could say a self-motivated and detail-oriented IT and risk compliance analyst. Mm -hmm. And then really utilize this mm -hmm. section as, okay, maybe instead of analytical, you may say data analysis, project management, um, if there's a spe specific, um, cyber, I think keeping cybersecurity concepts is good, but maybe if there's something specific you can pull out from that. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really need effective here, but you could just say interpersonal skills, or you could just say interpersonal communication, um, security auditing. And again, this is kind of where it's um, here, I would say organization skills, um, or like just say organization, um, technical writing, GRC concepts. So really, again, think about like those things that you would say um, are a skill set. Now, detail, again, detail oriented, self motivated, you can kind of use those a little bit more like as additives. I hope that makes sense. Yes, yes, okay. it does. Okay, cool. Um, so then going a little bit into your professional experience. Um, so here is where I want you to use action words. Um, so professionally, I would change a little bit. So I would say evaluate, um, evaluate, diagnose, and resolve technical issues, right? Okay. You can go into the rest of what you were saying here. Um, dedicate efforts toward creating and maintaining. I would say create and maintain comprehensive documentation. Um, does that kind of make sense? So you want to yeah. kind of make sure you're leading with those like action words. From what I've seen here, I like that you're utilizing numbers. I like that you are listing some specifics with the type of directory, um, the type of support. So tier one support. So very detailed in what it is that you're listing here. Even here, over 900 internal and external users, 15 to 25 tickets. Like this is great. This is, I would look at this resume and I would, I would know exactly, okay, we have this volume that we have come in. Is this something that you would be able to handle? So I really like that you incorporate that, um, incorporating utilizing systems. So one thing for you that I would recommend, you can have your key uh, competencies here, but mm -hmm. it may also be helpful if you just have the systems next, right? So like maybe specific, I would divide it up. So have like your, your um professional skills or key competencies, and then maybe have like uh, software, um, key software or some something along that line, if that makes sense. So you can list some of these things at the top and then it shows right from the jump and then they can read it a little bit further as they go on. Yes, I agree. Um, and then we talked about action words. Um, I think the form, this actual format is great. Um, just having the leading with the job title, kind of like I talked about, that's really good. Um, education and certification. So good, you have this separated and then the certifications, which I think this is a good, this is a good format that you can have because um, it saves space on your resume. So again, at a high level, those are some of the main points that I would pull out, but I, you have a lot of really good detail in your resume. And I think you have a really strong resume, I think it can maybe just use a, a couple formatting tweaks um, to really pull out those things from the jump. So we know exactly what it is that you're looking for. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Trust me, I'm over here writing all these details down. If you don't hear me flip these pages. <laughs> <laughs> no problem.
Um, so let's see. I know it's seven. Oh, um, just in case, uh, I will say that a really good place in case not that you aren't able to do anything at all, but I did get my resume done by a resume writer. Um, I got that done like a long, I want to say like when I first started in tech two years ago when I switched and she gave it to me in Canva and I've been able to adjust it the entire time. So I would highly suggest people do that as it helped me a ton because I'm not good at this stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing. A professional helped me with that, but it wasn't extremely expensive. It was $50 for a resume and a cover letter. So if you guys ever need anything, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to provide the resource. Absolutely. Thank you for that plug. Love a good, a good plug to um, help everyone. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see, do I, Rachel, I know we're close to time. Yeah, um, it's up to you. Did you, I think, is it Celia? I think I pronounced it right. I saw Celia and Julian's. Julian's are just emailed. I don't know if you want to do a quick review and then we can wrap up. Yeah. Like, yeah. E email Julian's, yeah. Okay, so let me see if I can pull up Julian. And then Celia, I do have right here. So we can start with Celia and I'll pull Julian's as well. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to share again here. All right. So Celia, this, um, I believe that you submitted initially a Word document. So that's kind of where, where this uh, formatting might be. But as a tip, just make sure always send a PDF document of your resume if possible. Um, so at first glance, um, just kind of taking a look at your resume, um, a couple formatting things that I would do. Um, I would have your professional summary um, at the top. So it looks like from here, um, I don't see one listed. So we definitely want to get a professional summary for you um, at the top, three to five sentences, kind of summarizing your experience. Um, you have your skills listed here at the bottom. And so some of the things you mentioned, community outreach, stakeholder engagement, those are things that you talked about. And then um, program development, program management, um, cultural competence, like all these are great skills. Put them at the top of your resume. So I can see that right away um, when I am looking at your, um, when I'm looking at your resume. OK, and then kind of going down to talk a little bit about work experience. So I um, you have a director, the company where you were at. So this this format, <clears throat> excuse me, this format is fine as well. Um, sometimes it might be um, when I usually do in resumes, I will typically list it kind of right underneath. But it's good that you have it right next to it. That works as well. Um, and then you have um, dates. Uh, location, which is great. So again, here, I'm what I'm noticing at first glance for you. Um, so program management of 40 seasonal employees, um, 300 teen employees, um, and then 24 partnering organizations. That is great. I think, again, kind of similarly, you, utilizing numbers is going to really set you apart. Here is where I would utilize like an action word. Um, so program management, but like what does that mean? Like, were you building out their training for these employees? Were you working with their managers to make sure that they were set up? Were you working with HR to make sure that their onboarding was prepared? So really tell me more about what it is that you were doing when you say program management, because these are some big numbers, right? So you want to make sure you're not selling yourself short and add some of that information. Um, developing and ex executing um the developed uh, strategic plans to ensure successful implementation of a six week youth development program. So when I say like key, key project, what did that program look like? What was your role in the program? Um, were you actually developing some of that content? So that's those are some of the things that I would encourage you to add. Um, going here. So here's an example where metric uh, documentation so here is where you might be able to utilize an action words, um, an action word, um, instead of kind of leading with um, a um, 
a noun per se. So um, documentation um, and what were you doing with that documentation? So you're making sure that they're on track. Um, but then but then what was it? Were you presenting that information? So those are some of the things that you can maybe add to strengthen. But I really feel you have a lot of really good detail in here, um, which I really like. You're kind of letting us know who you're. You could even take it a little bit further to let us know who were you working closely with. So were these um, part company partners? Were you helping them become company partners? Um, so if you wanted to kind of Take it, up, take it up a notch a little bit. You could add that. Um, here, just at a first glance, oops, make sure that you are being mindful of your tense. So utilizing past tense kind of managed um, instead of manage, which, um, and then I'm noticing here for participated, you want to make sure that you're utilizing past tense. Um, but overall, just make sure that um, you're being as detailed as possible. So I like that you're giving us some some information here, but take it a little bit further. Like, tell me, like, really tell me a little bit more about what it is that you were doing with that specific programming, because this is great experience of what I'm seeing. Um, and then education here. So I think it's perfectly fine to have your education listed here and then certification as well. So I think for you, we could keep this, um, we could keep these skills here. Um, I would say, if you are potentially looking for a career change, this certification you could have listed at the top instead of at the bottom. That might be beneficial to list. Like sometimes I see skills and certifications kind of listed next to each other. So you can adjust that if you're looking to make a career change. Any questions about that? Again, this is just a very quick Quick synopsis, and I'm happy to dive into this a little bit more detail um, after today's call, if you would like. No, thank you so much. Again, I, I was writing as, uh, typing as fast as I could. So thank you so much for those uh, tips and tricks for my resume. Thank you. Problem. And then Julian, we have you as the last resume. Um, so let me see if I can... I don't, was that something you emailed over today, Rachel? Yes. So okay. I put in the subject, I'm sure it went through Julian's resume. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. I see it. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let me add this to the... Okay. So Julian, here we go. All right. Hey, Julian. I, I went to school with Julian, y'all. Um, so uh, let's pull up your resume and then I'm making a note here that I will send some notes to you as well. So at first glance, um, I like that you are giving us a, a title right at the beginning. So you're letting us know directly um, your job currently. I like that you have a link to your LinkedIn. And I like the way that you did that here as well, because you don't always have to put the lengthier link. You can always just um, do a tag here, kind of like Julian did. So I really like that, that you have that on your resume. Um, kind of going to hear profile statement, um, similar to like what professional summary would be. Um, so project coordinator with two years of experience, um, demonstrating success in building strong relationships with stakeholders, high customer satisfaction and delivering world-class customer service experience in various customer centric roles. I really like that you are giving me like top three, like it's top three core skills. I'm a people person with patience and passion for helping understanding others. So I think you can kind of adjust that a little bit. You could say, um, you could just say, I'm, I am passionate about helping, um, helping uh, for helping and understanding others. And maybe take a little bit further. So helping others, to um, maybe solve problems, you know, kind of take, take it a little bit, step a little bit further um, to 
So that way we kind of know exactly what it is that you are looking to kind of help people with in your next role. And if it's going to be relevant to that industry. Um, so maybe you can kind of indicate some of that in your professional summary. Um, skills overview. So you have given us technical skills, personal skills, soft skills. I think that is great. Um, yeah. I think we can kind of do some consolidation a little bit on the skills. So maybe kind of think about, again, what are your top either six skills? Um, you could even do like six personal skills or six professional skills. And then you can do um, some that are a little bit more geared towards like systems that you're using. Um, but for some of these, like CRM system, I think are great to use. Um, Apple Windows, great to, to use. So some of these are really good skill sets. I think you can maybe consolidate a little Keep think about what your top skills are that you want to have on your resume and then make sure that the rest are listed on your LinkedIn to support. But utilize job descriptions of roles that you might be applying for to help you decide which skills to include on your resume. Um, going into the next portion here, so customer advocacy experience. Um, now, there are some resumes um, so we have like what are called like functional resumes. We have resumes that are um, going through um, like going through a specific timeline. Um, so here, I think this is kind of something where I would think about like that goes in like fresh or I'm sorry, a functional resume. Uh, but even with here, these are some things that you can either take and kind of incorporate into your professional summary or these are some things that you can take and incorporate into those specific roles. So that's kind of what I would encourage you to do with this section. Um, think about how these those can be incorporated into either roles, just to kind of save a little space on your resume. Um, and then you have the key achievement. Okay, so you're already doing the key project tip. Um, so having, you have here um, the title, role, um, all of that is good. Now, this, I would say that this part might be a little bit, um, a little, okay, so you, it looks like you were a customer support spe specialist, but just maybe working in some, a different area. Can you kind of, can you shed some yeah. light? Okay. Yeah, so um, I have been tweaking my resume for a few months now, so that's why it looks, if you would have saw how it looked before, very much so trash, but <laughs> um, I have been updating it, but I'm trying to transition. I do have like a, a heavy background in like um, customer support or Got like it. customer service. So I'm wanting to transition um, or like switch to a more like leadership role, more like project management or um like customer success. So some of okay. it might be different, but I have a lot of transferable skills that um, kind of set me up to those paths. So that's why it may look a little different when it goes to the actual experience. Got it. So that definitely makes sense. So I would just make sure that as you're uh, making some adjustments, you just have very clearly like what the job title is, the company you're at, and then the dates. Um, but here, um, I like that you have some action words listed. You are um, kind of indicating here a little bit about what it is that you are doing. You pull out a key achievement, which is really great. Um, and I think that um, even with this, so subject matter expert, um, policies, processes, let's see, onboarding new clients, working close partnerships. So some of these actually can be added to your de description here as well. Um, but I think here that you, from at first glance, you do have some great detail listed here. Um, and here I would say like serving as point of contact. Um, so you're utilizing some action words there. Um, complex issues, like what were some of those things that maybe were issues that were arising? So were they system issues? Like were you troubleshooting, um, directly with clients? So maybe kind of giving a little bit more detail there. 
Um, as I'm kind of looking down here, processing weekly vouchers, um, manage 50 accounts, great to include numbers, um, follow up with outbound calls to assist in filing vouchers, like what kind of vouchers. So that's kind of what I mean by providing a little bit of a little bit more detail. Um, and then I like that you included your promotion. So that's good to always include here as well. But when you're thinking about a key achievement, maybe pull out one thing specifically and then think about what other bullet points can go back into your professional experience. Um, and then we have here um, for, so again, these are all like action words. I would make sure that you're keeping this past tense here as well, onboarded and trained. Like this is a big skill set that you could utilize here. So that might be even something that you lead with first. Um, and then education. Okay, great. And then I like here that you do have this added. Now I would, I mean, you can always keep them at, on one document, but sometimes there might be, um, there might be, uh, applications that allow you to submit these as separate documents. So something to kind of keep in mind for that as well. Yeah, some um, some systems like, um, I don't know what it's called, but specific systems they'll have where you can do separately a cover letter and then mm -hmm. sometimes they don't. So yeah. sometimes I may like try and combine it in the resume and a uh, cover letter in that resume section so that way maybe the ATS can also pick up the words on my cover letter to try and like push me up a little bit so sometime I combine it sometime if there is a separate one for resume and cover letter I'll submit the resume as a resume and a cover letter as a cover letter so okay. it just depends okay yep that definitely makes sense for sure um and the last thing I would say um just on a, a formatting you don't necessarily have to bold because I noticed you have some where you're like bolding, um, but I don't think it, it harms the resume either. Right. So I would just make sure that those things that you are kind of highlighting really are going directly towards that job description and are the, the most relevant to the types of roles that you're applying for. Yes, I tailor all my resumes for um, the job descriptions. So most of the time, the bolded words are things that I pulled directly from looking at the job posts or maybe like words that they repeated. So I'm like, okay, you really want that. So let me make sure I <laughs> kind of uh, make that a little more pronounced on my resume than the other things. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I will, again, for everyone that I did go through um, um, for your note, I will make sure that you get the the notes for everyone. I kind of took note of, of that. Um, but overall, I'm impressed with with you all's resumes. So if you have like more specific questions, things that you want to take a deep dive into, especially if you're actively job searching, let's talk. Um, I would love to kind of talk a little bit more about how I can support you um, as well. Um, again, resume writing is something that I do as well. So I'm definitely happy, happy to do that. Jalen, um, your question? Yes, one quick question. So um, I've been a student, like a student athlete for the bulk of like my whole, pretty much my life. Uh, so playing in college, um, you know, I've done, I have the fortune of doing a lot of like entrepreneurial experience and things of that nature, as well as having like the lucrative, um, kind of like, um, at least like the, the skill sets that I've developed with my undergrad being in marketing and my master's being in MIS. Um, but one thing that I have been trying to improve on is I also went to multiple schools. So the first one I went to was University of Illinois, um, which I was in the business school or whatever, but my coach ended up getting fired. Um, so I was like, I was forced to kind of go to a different school. And then from there, um, long story short, I ended up going to, um, in totality, um, I registered as well. So I went to four schools, but each school I've done a significant amount of things, whether I've been, you know, I had a company where I was a part of, you know, I had a, I was a CMO part of a company that sold, you know, doing different things. So I can't like avoid it on my education. Like when you put the schools, but I, <laughs> for parentheses, I kind of put like transfer because of, you know, transfer because due to sports or something like that. And formatting wise, it just takes up a lot of space. And I'm trying to figure out, and I sent it, it's under JCL. 
Um, so you could take a look at it after the call, um, do to or or on a call, however you want to do it. But I'm just trying to be respectful of their time. But you know, I'm just trying to figure out ways to make my uh, resume more concise because I'm finishing up my last, uh, pretty much my last uh, credit for my school, my last course, and I'm trying to figure out okay, how can I um, just be more concise with my resume and it even starts with my education. Do I only use the ones that I went to school with? Um, but some of my it won't make sense because some of my references are at schools that I was there for a shorter period of time. So um, I was hoping you could help me with that and figure out how to navigate going through that. Yeah. So some of the first and we can definitely talk after as well. But some okay, of the first things that come to mind immediately, um, there is a way I think we can maybe tie that a little bit into your summary. So not necessarily saying I transferred schools. Right. But right. you say, you know, um, throughout my experience at various uh, work, because you mentioned having work experience. So you could say, yeah. you know, experienced in blank um, from um, various uh, corporations at, um, you know, said universities, or th things like that. Or in, uh, what we could also do is th if you have certain jobs that are from your professional experience, um, we can kind of incorporate um, as a previous student at such and such. So that way, underneath your education, you don't have to have like a long list with a long explanation. I think there's a way we can kind of like tailor that a little bit, can make it concise, but also still show, you know, if you have references that, that they're, they're going to ask, where do you know Jalen from? Right. So right. I think it's, it's something we can kind of tie. I, I have some ideas that I think might be helpful okay. for you. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just making a note of. Thank you. Universities. Okay. Got it. Um, I see one question. Do I assist with cover letter writing? It is the hardest to write. Um, so I do help with cover letter writing. However, I have a template that I built that I am happy to share with everybody that was able to attend or just with the group in general if, if, for the people that registered. Um, however, Rachel, you want to do that. I can share that template out. Um, and what, Those and are, what I would say. Okay, perfect. So I will I may, will definitely make sure to, to share that. Um, I'll share that template. And then I would say if, if anyone wants to kind of give a, just because I don't do it as a service necessarily anymore. However, if you want to give a stab at writing your cover letter based off of that template and send it to me, I can take a look at it. That sound Thank good? Thank you so much. No this was amazing. Thank you so much. Problem. Well, I hope this was uh, hope this was helpful for you all. Um, I would love to connect on LinkedIn um, so we can kind of continue the conversation. Please, please, please let me know how I can be a resource um, for you all. If you want me to review, you know, you go back, you take a look at your resume, make some adjustments based off of what we talked about today, and want to kind of prevent or show some of the things that you have worked on since this call, I would love that. So please connect with me. Um, would love to meet you all. So mm -hmm. that's all that I have. Rachel, I'll pass it back over to you. Yes, this is great, Jalen. A lot of great information. Um, I did put Jalen's LinkedIn in the chat so you can check her out there. Um, I also put the information on how to join Mentors of Color if you haven't already because Jalen will soon be joining Mentors of Color and you can schedule some time to meet with her. But thank you again and everybody have a great evening. Thank you all. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good night.